In this video, we're going to discuss the latest feature of the QuickBooks Online ecosystem called QuickBooks Ledger. QuickBooks Ledger, it's actually a version of QuickBooks Online that is $10 a month, which happens to be a third of the price of the next version available of QuickBooks Online called QuickBooks Online Simple Start. Now, even though QuickBooks Ledger was designed for the year-end, low transaction, tax-only type of clients, it's actually a real powerful version of QuickBooks Online. This video is going to be split into five sections. One, how to create a QuickBooks Ledger account within your QuickBooks Online Accountant Access. Two, what features you get inside QuickBooks Ledger. Three, what you will not get in QuickBooks Ledger compared to other versions of QuickBooks Online. Four, the new batch migration tool that allows you to import or bring in your QuickBooks desktop clients into QuickBooks Online for up to 50 company files at a time. And five and last, my review and final thoughts about this version of QuickBooks Online for accounting professionals just like me. Keep in mind that this video is going to have a full table of contents so you can skip to any section that is most relevant to you. And any follow-up videos or additional references and resources we will put in the description of the video below, so make sure you check that out. Let's jump right in and get started. If you already have access to the QuickBooks Online Accountants Portal, you can skip this section, as I'm actually going to walk you through how to create access to your QuickBooks Online Accountant Portal as an accounting professional. So the next step is to go to quickbooks.intuit.com forward slash accountants forward slash pro advisor. Don't worry, we'll put the full links and the full URLs in the description of the video below. In the Pro Advisor landing page, there should be a button somewhere that says create an account, free sign up, get started, or something like that. Keep in mind that these landing pages do rotate and change from time to time. I'm going to go ahead and click on free sign up, and then I'm going to be prompted to create a new account with my credentials. If your email address has already been used to create some sort of Intuit login, you may get something like this that says, this user ID is already taken, and you can actually continue to signing in if you know your password or recovering your account if you want to create your QuickBooks Online Accountant account using these specific credentials. Otherwise, it would allow you to create the account by simply clicking one more step and going to the next screen. The next page should simply ask you, to enter a code that was texted to you with the phone number that was entered. Keep in mind that this tutorial is actually designed for US only accountants. So this workflow could look different in other countries as QuickBooks enables QuickBooks Ledger outside of the United States in the near future. As the setup is completed, you should be able to see a home screen that kind of looks like this. You're going to see clients on the left hand side team, pro advisor, and so forth. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so we can see a little bit better. And if I click on clients, I currently do not have any clients as this is a brand new account. So once I'm logged into QuickBooks Line Accountant, I can simply create my new QuickBooks Ledger client by going into the top right of the screen and clicking on where it says add client. The next step is to enter your client's business information. When you click on Add More Info, you will have the option to enter more detailed information about your client. You can skip that and enter that later. Then we're going to scroll down and click on where it says Yes, Add Subscription, because this will be a monthly subscription type client in QuickBooks Online Accountant Portal. If you click on No, No Subscription Needed, that's basically just for you to add a client to the client list that actually doesn't use QuickBooks Online at all. So we're going to go back and click on Yes, Add Subscription, and we're going to pick the option Pro Advisor Discount. In the QuickBooks world, the word Pro Advisor is used synonymous with QuickBooks Online Accountant Portal, which is what I'm showing you now. I'm going to go ahead and click on Next, and we're going to go to the next screen. That's going to give me all the options of different versions of QuickBooks Online that I can create. Now, I as the accountant or the accounting professional, I am the one that actually pays for these monthly subscriptions, and it's assumed that within my accounting service, whether it's tax, accounting, bookkeeping, whatever it is, 
I am going to include that price that I'm paying to Intuit uh, as part of what I charge my client. There's many versions of QuickBooks Online. We have QuickBooks Online Advanced, QuickBooks Online Plus, QuickBooks Online Essentials, and QuickBooks Online Simple Start. Those are actually the same exact versions of QuickBooks Online that small business owners have access to purchasing on their own. What's unique about purchasing QuickBooks Online in the Pro Advisor portal is that you're going to be paying a 30% discount if it's those advanced plus essentials and simple start versions of QuickBooks Online. You will see all the way in the bottom QuickBooks Ledger, which is this special version, which is $10 a month. I'm going to go ahead and click on select. I will have the option to add QuickBooks Online Payroll. I can do it now or in the future or QuickBooks Time as additional add-ons to the basic Ledger account. For now, we're going to be focused just on ten, the $10 a month QuickBooks Ledger account. There's a little checkbox on here that says, make me the primary admin. My strong recommendation is that you don't check that box because you probably want to add your client or the owner of the business that you're managing the books for as the primary admin so they can access QuickBooks as well. So do not check that box if you ever want to add that client as the primary admin so you can collaborate with that client. If you do not have a credit card on file or a payment method, you're going to click on Payment Method Add and enter the preferred method in which your firm wants to pay for this monthly subscription. And once that's all set, we're going to click on Place Order. Perfect. Let's jump right in into QuickBooks Ledger. Now we added our very first client in QuickBooks Online Accountant, and I'm going to show you all the features that are available in QuickBooks Ledger. Keep in mind that you might have QuickBooks Ledger clients and also clients using regular versions of QuickBooks Online. You're going to see them all in the same client portal. To access any client, we're actually going to click on the QuickBooks logo or in the company name of each client. And then once again, in the QuickBooks logo, and that will have us log in into the QuickBooks Online company account. The very first time that you create any QuickBooks Online file, whether it's QuickBooks Ledger or any other version of QuickBooks Online, we have to go to the standard setup process and answer a couple of questions so QuickBooks can help us configure the initial settings of QuickBooks Online that works best for that particular client. So go ahead and go through all the questions and we're going to see the next steps shortly. Perfect. We set up the company file. Now you will notice if you have any experience with QuickBooks Online that the interface looks very much the same as all other versions of QuickBooks Online. We get the left navigation bar with access to all the menus and all the areas available in QuickBooks Online. You also get the very familiar new button in which you can create all new transactions. Over the right hand side, we also get the gear menu that gives us access to configuring all major areas of QuickBooks Online. Of course, the most common area that we go to is account and settings. So we can configure, turn on and off all different settings inside QuickBooks Online, including the fundamental information such as company name, company email, and all other contact information. Let's go ahead and set that up. Perfect. Feel free to go through all the different settings inside QuickBooks Ledger. So you can notice what are the things that you can turn off and on inside QuickBooks Ledger. That should give you a pretty good insight as to what are the things that you can and cannot do in QuickBooks Ledger compared to the other versions of QuickBooks Online. The other place I want to go into is in the chart of accounts. I'm going to click in the gear menu and go into chart of accounts because it happens to be the most centric and the most common place where accounting professionals go into when they first set up a QuickBooks Online account. You will notice immediately that QuickBooks creates a very core version of your chart of accounts. You can actually, from this screen, you can import your chart of accounts if you happen to have it in a spreadsheet, CSV, or Excel file, or you can use the QuickBooks Online Accountant Chart of Accounts tool to migrate any custom chart of accounts that you might have set up for multiple clients. Let me show you really quick what that looks like. I'm going to go back into my accountant portal simply by clicking on the QuickBooks Accountant logo on the top left. 
Then I'm going to go into Account and Tools. Then I'm going to click on COA Templates or Chart of Account Templates. The Chart of Account Templates allows you to create multiple templates that you can at any point in time automatically load into any of your QuickBooks Online clients, whether it's QuickBooks Ledger or any version of QuickBooks Online. I'm going to click on Add New Template and then select Service-Based Business and then click on Next. QuickBooks is going to generate a very standard generic chart of accounts for a typical service-based business for you, which you can create as your new template. Now, at this point, I am not adding this into, into my QuickBooks Ledger account or in any client file. I'm simply just creating the template. From here, I can either disable or enable account numbers, and I can add numbers in any custom way that I wish. I can also create new accounts, sub accounts, delete accounts as part of the templates that I want to create. Once your template is completed, you're going to click on save. And now you're going to have a template called service based business. You can have unlimited number of templates. And then once you create your QuickBooks online account or your QuickBooks ledger account, you can apply that template right when you first create the account. So in this case, I'm going to click on apply template. I'm going to select my client from the drop down list. This one is called new ledger client. And then I'm going to click on save. So if I go this route and I go back into my client account, I should now see the full chart of accounts that came from my original template. So let's check that out. Let's go into the gear menu and then chart of accounts. And there it is a much longer, much fuller chart of accounts. Once again, you don't have to use this route. You can always create your chart of accounts from scratch, or you can click on this new button on the top right and the drop down menu, click on import. And from here, you can import any chart of accounts you happen to already have either in a Google sheet, in a CSV or Excel file already in your computer. Let's X out of that. Let's talk about the other fundamental features that you're expecting to have in QuickBooks Ledger. Primarily, and probably the most important feature in the entire QuickBooks Online ecosystem is banking. If I click on the Transactions tab on the left navigation bar and click on Bank Transactions, from here, I can connect to any bank I was able to connect with any QuickBooks Online account. I can simply click on Connect Account, pick the bank that you bank with, enter your credentials, and you'll be able to establish a direct connection with your QuickBooks Ledger that can automatically download all the transactions for you. If you don't have direct banking connection, you can also upload your, tr your transactions from a manually downloaded file from the bank. You can click on something like Upload Transactions and drag and drop your .qbo or CSV file that you downloaded directly from the bank. And once you connect your bank or upload your bank files, you get all the incredible functionality that you're expecting to see with QuickBooks Online bank feeds. Things like being able to categorize transactions directly when they get downloaded from the bank or create rules to automate the process of automatically categorizing these transactions as they get downloaded. And of course, once you have categorized all your transactions from your bank, you can go into the bank register and you can add any transactions manually that you want to add or you can verify the transactions that were entered from the bank feeds and you can recategorize them on the spot, add a payee if it was missing, edit or delete transactions straight from the register. And of course, you get full set of financial statements. You can run your profit and loss, your balance sheet, general ledger, and the most basic reports that you're going to need to be able to create your financial statements, file your taxes, or whatever reason you're using QuickBooks Online for. Let's talk about the transaction types that you can create in QuickBooks Online. Let's click on the New button, and you can create expense transactions, which are paid from either your bank account or your credit card accounts, checks, which are expenses that are only paid from your bank account, which are tagged as checks with a check number, credit card credits, which is these reversals or payments to the credit card. Sometimes there'll be refunds on your credit card, and of course, if you created checks, you can print checks as well, and you can track all the different vendors that you're paying through the vendor transactions. You can also track your contractors, 
which are vendors that you pay for services that U.S. companies are actually obligated to report to the IRS at the end of the year via a Form 1099, which is also available in QuickBooks Ledger. There's an additional charge for filing those 1099 forms, but it's all available within QuickBooks Online. So you don't have to use a third-party app or anything like that to be able to file your 1099s at your end, which is really nice. Of course, when you have income or deposits coming into the bank, you're gonna have a bank deposit transaction. As an accountant, you could always do transfers between two balance sheets accounts. And of course, you can do transactions like journal entries and paying down credit cards. So essentially, you get all the fundamental transaction types that are required for you to book income, expenses, potentially contractor payments with 1099s, and potentially payroll payments if you have employees that you want to track, including all tax withholdings, within QuickBooks Online Ledger. And of course, you get a full balance sheet as well. Let's go to reports, and then balance sheet, and you get full set of financial statements. Let's quickly go back to reports and profit and loss. And it's super easy to pull any sort of reports that you're going to need either in a monthly basis or a year end. Let's talk about one more thing. We're going to click on the gear menu and then click on manage users. When you create a QuickBooks Ledger account, you're automatically added as the accountant. And also because I added my client as the primary admin, notice that we invited our client. And once they accept the invitation, it would say active and they'll be able to log in and collaborate with you in either entering transactions or just monitoring financial reports. Okay, let's move on to and talk about what you do not get with QuickBooks Ledger compared to other versions of QuickBooks Online. I'm going to create a QuickBooks Online Simple Start client just so we can compare the features that you get with QuickBooks Online Simple Start or higher compared to QuickBooks Ledger. Keep in mind that Pro Advisors actually get a 30% discount of the retail price of QuickBooks Online Simple Start, which I mentioned earlier is $30 a month or three times what QuickBooks Ledger costs. Let me create the account, and then we can jump right into discussing those features. Okay, I know I went through that setup process fairly quickly, but just to show you, it's essentially the same steps that we take to create a QuickBooks Ledger account or another QuickBooks Online account. I'm gonna click on the new button, which is the easiest way to illustrate the difference between QuickBooks Ledger and something like QuickBooks Online Simple Start. For example, with QuickBooks Online Simple Start and above, you get customer level transactions, transactions such as invoices, receiving payments against those invoices, estimates for you to create prior to the invoices so your customers can approve prior to you invoicing them, credit memos to create reversals or adjustments to those invoices, sales receipts, which is a combination of invoices and the deposits at the same time, refunds receipts to reverse a sales receipt and enter a transaction in which you're refunding your customer and just adding customers in general. All of these customer level transactions are not available in QuickBooks Ledger by design. On the vendor side, QuickBooks Ledger does give you expense checks as we discussed earlier, but you do not get any accounts payable. So you don't get bills, pay bills, and vendor credits. All the other features such as credit card credits, print checks, and add vendors, you do get that with QuickBooks Ledger. Also, because there are no customer level transactions, you do not get statements in QuickBooks Ledger, and you also do not get the ability to track sales by products or services, or often called items. And also worth mentioning, on the banking side, there's a feature called Receipts that allows you to upload physical receipts into QuickBooks Online and add them or attach them to a transaction that you already created or a transaction that you have downloaded from the bank. This Receipts feature is not available in QuickBooks Ledger, but it is available on the higher versions of QuickBooks Online. You will notice features such as cash flow or cash flow planner. Those are not available in QuickBooks Ledger. And also this feature here called mileage, also not available in QuickBooks Ledger. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to back to my Ledger account. And it's important to mention that you do get the full books review and client overview sections that are available in all versions of QuickBooks Online as an accounting pro. 
these two sections called client overview and books review are really important for your monthly bookkeeping type of work. Okay, let's move on to the new batch migration tool inside QuickBooks Online, which allows you to bring up to 50 QuickBooks desktop company files at a time. I'm gonna click on the gear menu and then click on import desktop data. You will notice that there's a button here that says open multiple migration tool. And once you click on that, it will take you to a screen where you can click on start and upload the special files that you can create in QuickBooks desktop. So you can upload them to the, into the screen and simply just wait until you can upload up to 50 clients at a time. There should be a step-by-step -step video and a step-by-step -step guide that you can click in this page for you to have a written or a printable version of the instructions. I went ahead and opened QuickBooks Desktop, and I'm gonna click on the Company menu and go down to where it says, Migrate Multiple Company Files to QuickBooks Online. You will now notice a button that says, Save as QM File. I'm gonna click on Save as QM File, and then save this somewhere in my computer. We're gonna wait for the process to finish up. And once it's done saving up, it's gonna ask you whether you want to save to another file or open the batch migration tool. So I'm gonna click on save another QM file. I'm gonna select another company file that I wanna migrate into QuickBooks Online. Then select where I wanna save this next QM file and wait for this process to finish. Of course, you will repeat this process for as many companies as you wanna set up. But once you're finished creating all, the, your, all your .qm files, you can simply just go back into QuickBooks Online. And then once you're in the batch migration section, which again, for reference, we clicked on the gear menu and then clicked on import desktop data. And then we clicked on where it says open migration tool. And then now on this page, we can now finally click on start. And on this next screen, you'll simply be able to click on select QM files, pick them from your computer, or just simply go out to the folder where you have everything saved and you can click and drag those files into this screen. You can do up to 50 at a time. Once you're done dragging all the files, you go to next and then you will be able on the next screen, you'll be able to map all of the QuickBooks desktop files that you are exporting and importing into QuickBooks Online, and you'll be able to map each of the clients with whichever client file you have created in QuickBooks Online prior to doing the migration. Then you click on Next, and you simply just wait for the conversion to finish. Make sure that these files that you've created in QuickBooks Online, or these profiles you created in QuickBooks Online, are less than 60 days old, otherwise the batch migration tool won't work. And the next steps, just wait for the email where you were notified where all the files that you migrated to QuickBooks Online are ready to work on. Keep in mind that whether you use the migration tool or convert the QuickBooks desktop file to QuickBooks Online one at a time, you still have to follow the same process of checking the reports and checking to make sure that all the data was migrated properly. I'll put links in the description below of more resources about specifically what to check after you convert a QuickBooks desktop file into QuickBooks Online. And the last piece worth talking about is how to remove some of these company files from your QuickBooks Online Accountant portal. When you log into QuickBooks Online Accountant and you click on Clients, you'll be able to see the list of all the clients that either you created and you're paying for as their accountant or clients that have added you as their accountant to collaborate. Now, if you click on the gear menu on the top right of the screen and you click on subscriptions and billings, you'll be able to see the list of all the company files that are under your QuickBooks Online accountant account. Under this tab that says account bill subscriptions, you will see all of your clients and how much you're paying for each of their accounts. If you wanna cancel any of these subscriptions, you can simply click on one of them and then click on the drop down menu next to where it says subscription actions and then simply just click on cancel. And to confirm the cancellation of the subscription, you must click on confirm transfer. A confirming transfer basically means giving your client the ability to take over the account and convert the subscription to at least QuickBooks Online Simple Start. Uh, you do have to give the client the opportunity to take over the client billing 
and own and control that account from that moment forward. They have the ability to invite a different accountant if they want to, to collaborate with them in the future. Now, if you actually open up one of those client files and you want to export the data prior to canceling the subscription, you can do that. All you want to do is click on the gear menu and then click on where it says export data. And then on the bottom right of the screen, you will see a button that says export to Excel. Once you click on export to Excel, you will have a zip file downloaded into your computer, your balance sheet, general ledger, journals, profit and loss, trial balance, vendor list, etc. So all your accounting data will be available in an Excel file or a spreadsheet file so you can use as a backup in the future. Great. Let's talk about the last piece here, which is my personal recommendations about QuickBooks Ledger. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial to understand now the differences between QuickBooks Ledger and the other versions of QuickBooks Online. Now, keep in mind this batch migration tool that I just showed you is actually independent of QuickBooks Ledger. You can use the batch migration tool to migrate QuickBooks desktop files to either Ledger or any other version of QuickBooks Online. It just happens to be that the QuickBooks Ledger and the migration tool kind of came out at the same time. Now, I want to make a couple of important notes. You will be able to upgrade your QuickBooks Ledger to QuickBooks Online Simple Start or higher versions at any point in the future, but you will never be able to downgrade from a higher version to QuickBooks Ledger. So if you already have clients in QuickBooks Online Simple Start or higher, you cannot bring them down on the same company file to QuickBooks Ledger. QuickBooks Ledger can only be used to create a brand new blank company file or to migrate from desktop into QuickBooks Ledger. Now, our firm has already transferred some of our clients in which we were controlling or managing the annual books for in QuickBooks Desktop. We've moved them into QuickBooks Ledger. You're going to have to continuously need to check your client base to see which are your clients that you currently manage in QuickBooks Desktop or manage via a different accounting system, or maybe even with spreadsheets to see if the $10 a month or $120 a year is worth it over the current system that you have, especially if there's added value with the collaborative workflows that QuickBooks Ledger or QuickBooks Online allows you to do. For example, if your QuickBooks Online client has access to QuickBooks Ledger or any version of QuickBooks Online, they'll be able to attach receipts to transactions that you've already created or downloaded or categorized through the bank. They'll be able to pull their own reports and you'll even be able to add third-party apps to QuickBooks Ledger, just like you could with all versions of QuickBooks Online, which adds some new opportunities to interact with your clients. So it's up to you to decide as an accounting professional or an accounting firm if this is the best option for you. Now, I personally love that Intuit created this product for accountants. It is a great option as it's currently less than half the price as the next version of QuickBooks Online with a 30% discount. And it will allow a lot of accounting professionals that have been thinking about moving their firm to the cloud, but they were worried about the cost structure of QuickBooks Online per client compared to historically how much it cost them to only pay for QuickBooks Desktop and just keeping their QuickBooks Desktop clients in their own computer systems. This is going to be the next step into moving most of accounting to the cloud, which is definitely where the future is heading to and what Intuit's vision is of accounting software, 100% cloud enabled, AI enabled, and connected to banks and third-party apps as a full cloud-based ecosystem. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one.